And I'm bringing to you live My boys Alec and Nate Tequila Ty Jay Nelly and Zellin in the building So kick it back, pour the drink We chillin' because I'm boozing And bettin' and ballin' like I'm two six In the blue kicks, watch me move quick Yeah, it's the blueprint So who's getting involved? Welcome in to the show This is Booze, Bets, and Ball, baby And welcome back to Booze, Bets, and Ball, a Penn State football podcast brought to you by Big Banter Sports. Uh, Tyler, with me here, we're going to quickly go over Penn State's 30-13 to win over Illinois this past Saturday, first road game of the season, first conference game of the season. Uh, a lot to take away from this, some struggles early on, especially in the passing game. Drew Aller, first road start, first conference start, a little shaky at times, 16 out of 33 for 208 yards, no touchdowns. Uh, Penn State's only touchdown pass came from the third string running back, Trey Potts, but Drew Aller also did not turn the ball over via interception or fumble. So not a day like the past two games where he seemingly took over the game, but at the same time, he really did nothing to hurt this team, especially with the way they were struggling on offense, didn't do anything to give Illinois any gifts. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, it was a little shaky, but like you said, there's no turnovers in the game, and that's a huge plus uh, from a young quarterback. Like He's still very young. He still is only his third true start. Um, so it's there's still going to be growing pains. we got to be used to that. But at the end of the day, he looked good. He looked calm. Um, his playmakers could have made a couple more plays, and those stats would look a lot better. Um, specifically, I know McLean had two pretty ugly drops. Katron had a tough catch, but it could have been a touchdown at the start. Um, so, yeah, I mean, overall, it, we won an ugly road game that everyone was fearing as one of our biggest challenges. And as Penn State fans, we know people are complaining of how we looked. But at the end of the day, we won 30-13. to 13. And in years past, that could have been a game that could have been like a 21-20 or something like that. So, I mean, we won by 17 and people are still finding ways to complain, which is always a good sign because that's just kind of the expectations this team has. Yeah, I think the the expectations definitely plays a role in this. I will say it was similar to the West Virginia game in a sense where I can look at three or four plays and say, I think this team left at least 10 to 14 points out there, kind of like that game. Uh, you mentioned the two drops, one – both by McLean. I'm pretty sure one of them was on a third and short that would have converted and they ended up punting. You had Both the, South, I believe. Yeah. Uh, you had, like you mentioned, Penn State with that goal line drive at the beginning of the game after the defense forced its first of five turnovers, which we'll get into. But, you know, on that drive, I, I wanted to bring this up, but is Penn State kind of overusing the T formation there? I mean, they they used it on, what was it, three of the four plays on that goal line drive, and it seemed like Illinois was was ready for it. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a valid question. Um, I think it's still early in the year, and it's Illinois wasn't someone that sparked fear into our coaches. Obviously, it was a Big Ten game, first row game. But I really think the whole – evolution of this offense is going to be way different by the time we get to the Ohio state, the Michigan games. And they're not going to put too much crazy stuff out there this early. Cause I mean, not to sound as a cocky fan or anything, but Penn state on paper should beat everyone on by pretty easily besides Ohio state and Michigan. And that's the games that um, schemes going to come into play. These crazy design plays, like all this stuff, everything's going to matter for those games. Um, but at the same time, they want to use that T formation. They want to establish the run and we haven't done it that great this year it's worked but part of that's just because we're more talented so i think they want to get some of those um corrections fixed and they're going to kind of uh, hit that nail on the head until they get it uh to the place they want it to be yeah so that drive ends in a field goal instead of what well, looks like a couple opportunities to get seven and to and be a chip team you got to score in that position yeah so, I, I feel like that well, whether it's the T formation itself or uh, finding other ways to move the ball down there. But that's where games are won and lost at uh, 10 yard line and in. You got to score a touchdown. Yeah, I feel like that drive kind of set a, a bad tone for the first half. Uh, I, I think they score there a touchdown. I feel like this game goes a little differently. I think some doubt crept in their head. Obviously, the 11 a.m. local start already a little sleepy. I think not getting in there, you know, played with their heads a little bit. But 
Uh, there's also a couple penalties. They had the third and two down at the Illinois 2021, I think it was, um, right before the half. And Kendra Lambert Smith gets a 15 yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty for, I, I guess it was pulling someone, pushing someone off the pile, or I, I couldn't yeah, really it, make up. It was coming out of the pile and it's kind of, it was a little bit of a late push. It was yeah. tick tacky. The play was just blown dead. But at the same time, you got to be smarter and not do that. Yeah, I think the guy that's perceived as the leader in a young receiver room, you'd rather he not, you know, be the one to make that play. Um, so that that results in Penn State going, having, you know, throw on a third and 17 then, which falls incomplete, and Penn State tries a 51-yard field goal, which gets blocked. Uh, we'll get into the field goal kicking in a second, but then Illinois comes down, scores their first touchdown of the game, and you're like, oh, well, now we have a game, and, you know, that's just, at least that you know that could have been a 14 point swing right there penn state easily could have went into the half leading 20 nothing if keandre lambert smith doesn't get that penalty and then later in the game there was another third and short where then i'm pretty sure north said the center jumped and it caused that to go to third and seven they didn't get that so that cost them some points so kind of like the west virginia game between the drops, the maybe overuse of the T formation, and then those two penalties. Penn State left a significant amount of points out there, there, but still getting a 30 on the road against a solid defense, obviously, like we talked about in the preview show last week, not where Illinois was last year, but still, you know, towards at least the middle of the Big Ten, you would think, in terms of defense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you saw how strong that defensive line was for them, and um, I mean, throughout this first couple of weeks, we're going to see West Virginia, one of the better lines. We're going to see uh, Illinois, one of the better defensive lines. So we're getting some good reps. Um, overall, these teams might not be as complete as other teams we're going to see, but they're seeing uh, different looks throughout the start of the year. Um, they're breaking in a new center, which is probably the most important piece on the O-line in terms of calling the protections and getting everything adjusted. A young and new quarterback. Um, skill playmakers, like, yeah, we got a ton of talent, but a lot of them are still young. A lot of them are sophomores, um, maybe third years, but it's their first time really contributing at all. So they're still breaking in a lot of new faces and people are having to uh, pick up on the fly here. But overall, yeah, you can't really be too upset with scoring 30 points and um, getting a win on the road at a Big Ten conference game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last thing on the offense here really quick. The running game, 164 yards, two touchdowns, but it's still, it doesn't seem right at the same time. I mean, they ran it 40 times, so that's an average of 4.1 a carry. Uh, the long was 21, and that was by Perbeel, the backup quarterback. Obviously, when he comes in, a lot of it is just QB draws and stuff, trying to get the clock out. But Katron Allen, 13 carries, 54 yards, a touchdown, a long of 18. Singleton, just 11 carries, just 37 yards and a touchdown with a six, the his long was a 16-yard touchdown. I'll give him credit. There was only 16 yards left to go, so he couldn't go any further. That one would have been good from the opposing one-yard line. I think so. No one touched him. Uh, but it, it just seems like – I know Johnny Newton, who we talked about a lot, had a lot to do on the interior for Illinois with Penn State not getting a lot done in the run game. But it just seems like – the explosive run play is not there. Whereas early in the season last year, Singleton, I think at this point had four or five runs of 40 plus yards between the games against Ohio and Auburn. So I, I'm just kind of waiting to see that. And I think maybe the shifting in the interior of the offensive line is playing a little bit of a role. Absolutely. I'd say that's one of the biggest factors in it is not that these guys aren't as good or anything. I mean, they have the potential to be all world, but no, everyone was undervaluing um, how big of a loss Juice Scruggs was from that offensive yeah. line. I mean, he was, I want to say, a three-year starter. I mean, at least played a majority of the snaps the last three years, um, both, both guard and center. He was making all the calls up there. Um, so I think just a little bit of that communication. Losing Landon last minute definitely kind of shocked them. JB's done a great job, but, I mean, there's just some can, – can you uh, – sorry, some uh, flow there up front right. that they needed. <laughs> And uh, they're kind of losing that right now. And yeah. I think they're going to, over time, adjust and get there to the point that they need to be. Um, but obviously going into the ex or expectations we have with this team with the two all-world running backs and a lot of returning starters and the talent on the O-line, we were kind of expecting that to pop right away. 
And it's unlike the NFL. Like, I mean, this is kind of our preseason these first couple of weeks where we're yeah. getting a fly and uh, learning how to make these plays together with this new offensive line together up there. So uh, we'll see it eventually. Um, one other thing, I think the receivers got to do a better job on staying on their blocks. So there's some of these runs that are like a seven or eight yard gain that can go to a 20, 25 yard gain. If they make one of those blocks where they're not forced to cut inside, they can take the outside or they can see that extra hole. Um, it's it's a whole continuum of things. Like they just got to work on it together and it's going to click at some point. Yeah, definitely. So that's what we got for the offense. We will see. We'll get more to them uh, with the Iowa preview later this week. Obviously, another decent challenge for them. But the defense, uh, they got those three guys back we talked about. Daquan Hardy at the nickel corner. Kaziah Izzard, arguably the best defensive tackle on the team. And Amin Vanover, maybe the best run-stopping defensive end on the team. So five turnovers. They got Luke Altmaier for four interceptions. Uh, Luke Altmaier, we don't think, is a bad quarterback. So getting four off of him, I was like pretty surprised. But three sacks, seven tackles for loss. Uh, Johnny Dixon, Abdul Carter. Daquan Hardy, Cam Miller all had interceptions. Dom DeLuca had a forced fumble. The one to Cam Miller was probably the worst one. Uh, just kind of threw it right at him. The Carter one was also pretty bad. Didn't see him in, just lurking there in the middle of the field, uh, trying to hit a guy across the middle, and Carter just snagged that. So a couple bad, bad throws by Altmaier. But I, I think this is what we come to expect with this defense. They're going to give up some yards, maybe some points, but they always just find a flashy player or two that saves a day. And for the third straight game, the first team defense allowed just one touchdown. Yeah. I mean, you can't really ask for a better performance. I know people are talking about what we were on right before the air saying how they had 292 yards. Yeah. And that's people who look at the stats, if you watch that game, they weren't moving the ball really at all besides that one drive. Um, you can't really, again, you can't ask for more. They, they no. played amazing. Um, Four interceptions is awesome. Uh, they had lockdown coverage, I'd say, for the most part. There wasn't any really times where you're like, oh, what was he doing there? Yeah. Uh, Hardy's pick, you kind of saw – because he was on the outside for that too, which mm-hmm. is awesome to see that he's able to play out there too. Um, Cam Miller, he's been shining all offseason with the buzz, and then the first couple games gets that pick. That was awesome. Dixon's pick was crucial, I think, because they were kind of driving there to start the second half. If they score there, whether – even if it was just a field goal, it kind of goes to a one possession game, and who yeah. knows what Penn State thinks about there. So that was a big time play. Carter is doing Carter thing. So, yeah, overall, great performance from the defense. Yeah, I know uh, a lot of people worried about the rush defense maybe coming into this one. Uh, obviously, Illinois got down in the second half and really couldn't run the ball, but 29 carries, just 62 yards with a long of 20. So, one third of those yards came on. One carry, obviously, um, Paddock, the backup quarterback, got sacked, was the one that got sacked. Altmaier didn't. Paddock came in for Illinois. Uh, so he had, he had minus 20 yards, obviously, uh, sacks count against team rushing for some reason in college. So they really, I guess, had 82 yards, but still to hold them to 82 yards on 20, it would be 26 carries uh, with the long being 20 and then really nothing crazy outside of that. Pretty good showing from them uh really quick special teams obviously kicker was a big thing of conversation the last couple of weeks where Sanders Sahedok missed two against West Virginia Falcons came and made one and then they didn't kick a field goal against Delaware so this was kind of our first real look at Falcons as the full-time starter three for four made a 40 yarder and then I think uh obviously the one on the goal line, which was 21, 20, something like that. And then I think get a 30 something yarder missed the 51 yarder. It was blocked by Newton. Uh, I guess, you know, part of that is that distance a little lower. It's going to get blocked. It's blocked. So, you know, you put some blame on the protection as well. And obviously the Keandre Lambert Smith 15 yard penalty didn't help. So overall, uh, what are your thoughts on Falcons? I think it's safe to say he's probably going to be the guy for the meantime until unless he does something that would be pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, he looks solid. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it's still too early in my thought. Just I always want to think, I guess that glass half empty is why didn't he win the job at the start right. of the year? So was he out just on his game today? Do we need to worry about later in the year? Um, again, I want to really put the block on him for that 50 yarder. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know what his range is. I know he hit a couple 50 plus in uh, at Columbia, 
Um, but, I mean, overall, he looked well. The team looked sound there. The block was it's just a lower kick, longer trajectory, and Newton made a hell of a play jumping that high and getting the ball. So I wouldn't be worried about it too much. Um, I'd like to see him get some more reps these next couple of weeks and get more comfortable because, again, at the end of the day, those Ohio State mission games could come down to one kick, and we need to make sure we're not leaving any points out there on the field. Yeah, uh, that's for sure, and it definitely helps that Penn State has three more games before the Ohio State game and a bye week. So there's – a lot of time, you know, Iowa could be a game where you might need a kick, but you don't think against Northwestern UMass that it'll be an issue. So they have some weeks to sort that out. Uh, so that's pretty much going to do it for this one. Penn State beats Illinois 30-13 to 13 to go to 3-0 and in the season. 3-0 and against the spread as well. The spread was 14 and a half. Penn State wins by 17. It looked like Illinois might have crept towards the backdoor cover, but Penn State kept them out of the end zone at the end of the game. Uh, we'll be back later in the week with our Iowa crossover, the guys from the Iowa site at Big Banter, to uh, break that game down a little more. But that's going to do it for this one, and uh, we'll see you next time.